Hello and welcome to a very exciting edition of Trends Travel. Now to start off this week's show, we take you over the seas all the way to the Seychelles. Bluer skies, even bluer oceans and lush greenery. It seems like a time so far away in a world that once existed, as we go back into the recesses of our memory and remember our time on one of the islands that make up the archipelago of the Seychelles. Yes, we went from touching down in exotic locations to locking down in our homes, but those magnificent sights are still there to behold. From the airport, the drive through the city centre is once again alive with colour and people and energy. The long-standing and time-worn buildings are in stark contrast to the island's natural beauty, and the people of the Seychelles, the Seychellois, go about their daily lives as we tour their island in retrospect. Making our way to the harbour in Port Victoria, the world's smallest capital city, we pass the Sir Selwyn Selwyn Clark Market. This market is the epicentre of the Mahi way of life. It is here that locals buy all their fresh produce. The smells and sounds still echo as tourists and holidaymakers browse the clothing market, finding the perfect souvenirs, artworks and authentic Seychelles goodies. But today we don't stay in Mahi. We are getting ready to board a jetty to take us on a reef safari. Today is a beautiful day and today right here in the middle of the ocean aboard Mason's Travel Tours and we're going to be doing the glass bottom boat and a bit of snorkeling, so follow us on that. As we take off, the young captain is pleased with the current weather conditions and the freedom of being outdoors and mans the boat chartering us out of the bay. The deeper we go into the Indian Ocean, the more beautiful and breathtaking the views become. As the sun hits the bright blue waters, it shows off a hue of turquoise and the backdrop of the receding bay boasts its gorgeous green mountains that engulf the red rooftops of the once too busy world of yesterday. We take a breath and entertain ourselves by making our way to the edge of the boat where we are handed slices of bread. It is here at the captain's go-ahead that we toss our crumbs into the ocean, calling to boatside literally thousands of little fish, welcoming them to join our memory. It's a dreamlike sight to behold, and the once placid water top is now alive with movement and colour and splashing tails. Full steam ahead again as the boat chugs on on the relatively short but scenic journey. In the distance between two lush green bodies of land, there is a tiny speck that awaits us. Yes, this little lone white boat, bobbling eerily in open waters as though abandoned, is our destination for a glass bottom boat safari. Even in memories, all safety measures are in place, including life vests and emergency protocol. This type of tiny space is not recommended for those suffering from a fear of narrowed and restricted enclosures. Hey Trenders, we're right here in the glass bottom boat as I said we would be. We're two meters underwater, right here is the glass. We're going to see the fish from there, so stay tuned, it's going to be a lot of fun. The glass bottom boat submerges just below the waterline, putting us in the perfect position to see reef sharks and colourful tropical fish, not forgetting the magnificent coral gardens. It's no wonder that tourists from around the world come here to see this. It is definitely a bucket list item. From underwater safari tours to the sound of seagulls overhead, we take time to enjoy the finer things in life, like the luxury of being on a yacht in the middle of the ocean under the East African sky. All over the boat, people are laughing and talking and enjoying each other's company, some taking pictures, others admiring the beautiful view, watching as the landscape comes closer into focus. There's also the mesmerizing tranquility of just watching the water streamline as the boat makes its way into the waters, leaving behind a faint foamy trail. It's good to be outdoors. Then it's time to get ready for a bit of water action. Bikini on, check. Sunscreen on, check. Flippers on, check. Lastly, goggles on, check and check again. Then it's down the metal staircase into the transparent blue waters below. The water is cool when it first touches you, awakening all your senses as it kind of steals your breath, but it warms against your skin as your body acclimatizes. You are literally let loose in the open waters of an entire ocean. You can make your way back to the boat and just laze about, or you can take the short swim to Moyen Island and explore. It is a very small island and 45 minutes takes you right around it. Apart from a wide variety of plant and bird life, the island is also home to giant tortoises, the eldest of whom is 81-year-old Desmond. A little further along, you will find a breathtaking lookout point, 
perfect for selfies and meditation if you are that way inclined. Now I'm certain that all of you, as much as we are, are missing your travels. But we'd like to know where you would travel to. So why not let us know on Instagram or on Twitter. That's on Trends on SABC using the hashtag SABC News. Medical experts and epidemiologists anticipate a surge in the number of cases in the country. Right now, it's kind of relaxed, but I'm a little bit concerned that we're going to see an upsurge in the next two, three weeks. And unions representing healthcare workers are outraged by what they call the health department's slow response. The staff in this area are saying that they're going to down tools up until the Department of Health steps up and gives them the right to get to deal with this virus. Medical experts and epidemiologists anticipate a surge in the number of cases in the country. Right now, it's kind of relaxed, but I'm a little bit concerned that we're going to see an upsurge in the next two, three weeks. And unions representing healthcare workers are outraged by what they call the health department's slow response. The staff in this area are saying that they're going to down tools up until the Department of Health steps up and gives them the right gear to deal with this virus. So the 21 day lockdown has done so many things for us. Most of us are literally at home. We haven't left the properties that we stay in. Some of us still come to work and some of us are on social media looking for ideas that inspire us to be creative, to, to keep our hands on the pulse of what's going on across the African continent. For me particularly, I came across this guy. Corona. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good. Ladies and gentlemen, the Kipness. Where does the name come from? My brother's email address. Yeah. Uh, Kipness at gmail.com. So it, it's, uh, it, it's, a, it's a word that I've always used throughout high school. The word mm -hmm. Kip is like a slang for cool. Yeah. And sort of like surface slang. So it's kind of just a word that I've always used. And uh, it's, it's very South African. Your face is quite popular. I mean, I felt like I don't even have to introduce you. Your song that you did about um, Stay Home South Africa, it, you sampled Toto's song, right? What happened that day? How long did it take you to come up to come up with that concept? Uh, well, coming up with the words was quite easy actually. I didn't have to change the words too much. Um, but actually recording it took a little bit of time. I had to <coughs> warm up my vocals just a little bit to get to those high notes. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just doing the whole sort of four panel thing was new to me. Um, but yeah, I think yeah, I think I think now that you know we don't have shows or anything, there's there's just a bit of time to spend in the studio and, and kind of make do of what you have and, and see what you can come up with. Mm. When you came up with that song, particularly, did you think it would go as viral as it did? Um, I had a feeling that it might, um, but when I saw that you know Jackson and Tetra was tweeting it and you know it was doing the rounds on Twitter and you know. People were, were messaging me saying, my aunt from Canada sent me the song. Like, I didn't expect that kind of response. Like, yeah, it, it kind of just spread through WhatsApp and, like, all over the place. But, uh, yeah, it's, you, you kind of get an idea or a sense of whether something's going to go viral or not. But, yeah, with this one I had a sense, but I didn't think it would go as far as the... Track of time and my life Ooh, has no roots 
Okay, so you've done quite a couple of songs. Um, I, I follow your work, so I'm constantly on YouTube looking for what you've come up with this week. I love the Quarantine Queen. You even dressed up for that. It's Quarantine Queen. Yeah, so Quarantine Queen is, is kind of like a term that I've been, I've been seeing thrown around on like Instagram. A lot of a lot of sort of influencer type people are, are using that word as a, it's a kind of catchphrase or a hashtag. I've been seeing like sort of stickers, people using the word foreign queen. So, so I thought I'd, I'd kind of jump on the train, put a towel around my head and just <laughs> pretend to be a, a bit of a queen. So, yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Dave. All the best for the future. Stay locked down. Yeah. All right. Okay. Enjoy the rest of the quarantine. Cheers, man. Bye. And that is my conversation with Dave, a.k.a. The Kiffness. For you at home, keep watching Trends Travel. Waya, waya. Looking to travel up north of Mzansi? Then you can put Palabura on the list of places to go. Be ready for the heat and humidity though as the weather remains the same all year round. I spent a few days there and explored a couple of things. My first stop was Woodsbred, a town situated at the foot of the Klein Drakensberg. Here I visited a serpentarium where you can get up close with snakes and other reptiles. These are endangered species and are kept here for safety. I spotted the tarantula and was surprised to find out that this big spider is not at all that dangerous. And my perception that the anaconda is a giant snake was also dispelled. In fact, the snake is not that big like we see in the movies. So what we have here is a marsh terrapin and apparently they eat flowers. So let's see. Oh, there's a baby one as well. I wonder if the baby's gonna take it. Yeah. On the side of the road, you can find the ladies that sell the home-brewed Marula beer, a skill that has been passed down from generation to generation. You can taste it first and then buy a bottle to take home, chill it in the refrigerator and drink it later. Thank you, Julia. Thank you. Your beer is nice. <laughs> Or you could go into town to a distillery. Due to the hot weather, Palabura is perfect for distilling spirits such as vodka, whiskey and gin. You can taste different infusions of all three at this place. It's all good to cool off from the heat. To end off a perfect day, an afternoon game drive in the Kruger National Park was just what we needed. We set out on the rocky terrain in search for the Big Five. That's what one hopes for when you go on a game drive, and as luck would have it, we were greeted by the elephants. There seems to be a lot of them on this side of the Kruger, so you are almost guaranteed to see them everywhere. We found a perfect picnic spot to view the sunset over the Limpopo skies and had uninvited guests. Or maybe we were the uninvited guests seeing that it's their home. The majestic animals are beautiful and not so dangerous as they don't charge at people. But in the wild, anything can happen. Here you go again. Oh, good girl, good girl. I hope I've given you nice ideas for things to do, but for now, stay home and stay safe. This shall pass and we will travel again. What are your most fondest traveling destinations? Why not let us know on Instagram or on Twitter? That's on Trends on SABC using the hashtag SABC News.
Dumilang and hello Mzansi, welcome to Tiskim's Daily Care, your guide to everything you need to know around COVID-19, also known as the coronavirus. So recent research has shown that unfortunately children and infants can be infected by the coronavirus. The good news, however, is that it's not as aggressive on children and infants as it is on, say, the elderly, particularly the elderly with medical conditions. Today, I have Dr. Mbata, who is an anatomical pathologist. So, doctor, the question I have for you is, if you are a guardian uh, of an infant or young children, what can you do to better protect uh, not only yourself, but children? No one is immune from the infection. However, for no really known reason, children are not getting a severe form of the disease. But we must still wash our hands, especially when we come from places like work, uh, from grocery shopping. Uh, we still need to make sure that when we get home, we sanitize, we wash our hands, and we constantly wash the children's hands because, I mean, babies still crawl and they'll pick up some viruses on the surface. So we're now the ones who are infecting our kids when it used to be the other way around. We actually have to protect children um, from us now because we carry the, the, the virus from work, from shopping to home. Thank you, Doctor, for that useful information. For parents and guardians out there, remember you can make washing hands very fun for the kids. Well, that's it from us at Daily Care. We'll catch you next time. However, if you do have any questions, remember we are on social media. Post, let us know. Even send us your pictures. Show us how you are doing during this lockdown time. From me and the pharmacists who care, stay home, stay safe and take care. Did you know that Victoria Falls is a waterfall in southern Africa on the Zambezi River? At the border between Zambia and Zimbabwe, Scottish missionary and explorer David Livingston is believed to have been the first European to view Victoria Falls on 16th November 1855 from what is known as Livingston Island. Livingston named the discovery in honor of Queen Victoria of Britain. The Victoria Falls are also called Musi Watunya, or the smoke that thunders. The little town of Fares in the Free State is a town absolutely worth visiting. Bling visited and she took us right through the streets of the entire town of Fares. Enjoy. Fares is a quaint little town with plenty of exploits for thrill seekers such as myself and this guy. My adventure buddy who most of the time you don't get to see on screen. But today, myself and the man behind all the pictures that you are seeing on your screen right now take you with us on an adventure of this town. Known as the town that produced the Paris pink granite due to the meteorite that hit right here centuries ago, Paris prides itself with a variety of outdoors activities. Uh, Paris is quite well known for, for its river uh, activities. Um, from kayaking to whitewater rafting, fly fishing, fishing. Um, there are a lot of lodges along the, uh, the, the river um, that, that actually uh, present that, those activities. Well, Stonehenge is mainly a summer venue, but winter brings its own speciality, uh, a special uh, ambiance to it with fire, blue vine. Um, but uh, in summer, from, from around about August now, uh, to about March, April, 
this whole paradise is booming. All the fun places here are a stone throw away. So we walked to the town's longest zip line. Here, I was not so brave. Oh, really? No, that way you are rude. You are mean, actually. Oh, I've got something to laugh about. Climbing. I saw you panicking. What, what went wrong there? Oh, guys, I don't mind panicking anywhere as long as it's not 100. How many feet up were we? As long as it's not up there, I can panic anywhere but there. Five feet. Uh, please, don't make me panic five feet above the ground, okay? Thank you very much. And look, they are laughing. Look at them laughing. <laughs> laughing. Yeah, she was just here. And then off I went. <laughs> now let's watch Travel Buddy multitask with his camera on the zip line. Brave, ne? At the end of the day, Parais rewarded us with this golden sunset. I learned how to fly fish and we all took a moment to take it all in. Our travel plans have temporarily been put on hold. This as the world deals with the coronavirus pandemic. We are currently on lockdown, but our travel adventurous selves remain curious and looking forward to more travels. We take you on a trip down memory lane to one of our travels where we visited KwaZulu Natal Elephant Coast, which got its name after the country's herd of indigenous African elephants that have lived in the region for centuries. Here, you'll experience game drives and boat crews. And it's also home to a large population of hippos and crocodiles. On the tour, you can expect to see the crocodiles and hippos and just some birds and some other wild animals. We got about plus minus 1,300 cro crocodiles and we got plus minus 1,000 hippos. This is a lake. It's a lake because we're not connected to the Indian Ocean anymore. We've been closed more than 16 years. The whole, the whole lake is about 65 kilometers long. After two hours on the river, we disembarked and made a stop at a local mini market where different art and craft items are sold. These artworks here sell fast because of their uniqueness. Uh, here at Sunset Jetty, we make a green monkey orange for tea light candles and for potpourri. We also make crocodiles, hippos, rhinos, uh, elephants and, and zebras. Before the product is complete, we have to go to the bush and fetch, and fetch the, the fruit. The fruit is green and hard, so we have to use an okapi, which is the strongest knife we prefer to use, uh, to open the, the, the green monkey orange. Inside the green monkey orange, you find the bigger seed like this, and those seeds, we take them, we scoop them out, and make sure the green monkey orange is completely clean inside. After that, we throw the animals, the pictures of the animals, you using the, the very same knife that we used to open the, the green monkey orange. After the all animals that I wish to throw on that monkey orange are finished and complete, then I, I peel off all the green skin that is unwanted up until the animal is clear and it, it appears clear, clearly on the monkey orange. The wetlands elephant coast is a perfect holiday destination. You might want to take your family there once the lockdown is lifted. And that's all we have for you in this week's edition of Trains Travel. We love taking you all over our beautiful country and we do hope that you enjoyed it. From me and my team, it's goodbye until next week. Same time, same place.
we're not allowed to be here from this moment on. So I guess the media is going to try and uh, move across uh, uh, the line at this stage.